Yo, play a flat, Memphis 10 list. Catch me on the Ugly Money Podcast. That's right. Y'all, y'all. Don't know me, you don't know me, you don't know me. What up, what up, what up? I am Ugly Money Nietzsche, and welcome to yet another episode of the Ugly Money Podcast. And my special guest of the evening is a legend in his own right. Memphis Tens own. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, show your love a play or fly. No applause, no autographs, no photos, please. <laughs> no pictures, please. No autograph, no applause. Now, the question I got to ask, who was Player Fly before Player Fly was Player Fly? Uh, even that dear but I mean, Matty Ewan. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Next question. I ain't catch that. I know it. But okay, let's go. <laughs> that's the, the inside. The inside. Yeah, that's just shout out to all the ones who knew me before I was who I I am, and everybody who knows that I am the same me that I've always been Respect. since uh, my date of birth. You know what I'm saying? I'm yes, a born mafia member back since the deuce of September, straight from South Parkway. I'm his many May Young grandson. I'm the only begotten son of Willie Davis Young. You know what I'm saying? I'm the funky town spokesman, ambassador. I am the king of all kings, the Memphis 10 legend. The Conan King of Town, Mr. Just Awake and Shaking once again, so you know it's on, Mr. Getting It On, Mr. Nobody Needs Nobody Himself. <laughs> Fly. There it is, David. <laughs> now, uh, let's go back to Memphis. Coming up in Memphis, growing up in Memphis. You got your strap? <laughs> <laughs> is it a car? No, it's too far. It's too far. It's too far. <laughs> How was it growing up in Memphis, brother? It was fun. It was alive, you know what I'm saying? I came from a family of have-nots. My grandmother, she wasn't rich, she wasn't poor, she was a hustler. I came from a family of hustlers, you know what I'm saying? A religious background. My grandmother was saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, Church of God in Christ. My father was a devoted Muslim, you know what I'm saying? And uh, so my folks always made a way. At the same time, other than my grandmother, basically everybody in my family was, were hustlers and drug abusers, you know what I'm saying? So um, I got all all of that shit in me. You yes, know sir. What I'm yes, sir. You said you said your granddaddy was a Muslim. No, I said my father was yeah, a Muslim. Yeah, your father was a Muslim and your grandmother yeah. was a Jehovah Witness. No, she was Church of God in Christ. She was saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, you know sir. where the church at Kojic, yes, C-O-G-I-C, not Baptist, not Methodist, not Jehovah Witness, you know, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. They run it up and down the yes, aisle. Yes, sir. They speak it in tongues. Yes, sir. You know, the uh, choir jamming. You know, one of them churches, like when you see the black church in the Oh, they be going up. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, all the way up. So, up. So, so with all those different religions and backgrounds, what holidays did you get to celebrate? Mine, though, I had to be, uh, Assalamu alaikum, uh, Jesus Christ, Allah, Akbar, Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, no, no offense to any organization yeah, or hood, yeah. but I had to be a blood and a crip at the same time. <laughs> the same time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because, uh, you know, they'll jump down on me like, what set you claim, nigga? You know yeah, what I'm yeah, you know, what yeah. Is, nigga, you know? <laughs> We get at the table, we get ready to pray. Bill praying like this, Big Mo praying like this. You know what I'm saying? I'm just praying. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Hoping they don't ask me to pray. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, you, you say the word hustler a lot when describing your parental parental figures. What is it like growing up? Man, I wouldn't. Uh, I hustlers. wouldn't. I wouldn't rather be anything but. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Talk you know, I'm gonna make a way. When there is no way, you know what I'm saying? And it's not necessarily, you know, uh, distributing contraband. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just shit. You can bring me a truckload of uh, washing machines or air fryers. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We don't get them motherfuckers off. You know what I'm saying? Somebody <laughs> got to get them. They ain't coming back. They ain't coming back. No, they ain't coming back. Yeah, I promise you that. So that, 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 you got that hustling mentality from your parents. Yeah, now, um, such and such, you know, me and such and such is my dog. You know, we got to talking. We was talking about, you know, uh, we're talking about playing fly today. You know, we had a conversation, <laughs> and he told me, he said, "Man, uh, he said when you get when you get in there with play a fly, ask play a fly what this mean." 
And I was trying to figure out, I thought it was a cowabunga, right? I'm thinking mm. at this mm. right here. Mm. You ninja turtle. And I, yeah, turtle. right? You know, that's why I'm talking. I don't think it's no cowabunga, cool, gnarly dude. I'm like, man, play a fly But if you was a ninja turtle, which one would you be? I'd be like Raphael. Raphael, the moody one. I'm, prob I'm probably going to be Leonardo. I can see that. Just me. Uh -huh. just, just, you know, just the, yeah. just the kind of person I am. But anyway, we was talking about this, this sign right here. And so I say, yeah, man, ask him about it, man. You know what I'm saying? He might, he might tell you something. He might tell you to go to hell. Never, I don't know. I ain't going to tell you. <laughs> well, to make a long story short, you know what I'm saying? It symbolizes Funkatown. That's something that I stand for and firmly believe in. You know what I'm saying? A lot of different people have their interpretations of what Funkatown means to them. Uh, Flat Nation know what it means to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? At one point, it was an, uh, it was an identification symbol for just the neighborhood, just for South Memphis, you yes, know sir. what I'm saying? Shouts out to Project Pet in North Memphis. They had the thumbs with thumbs mm. up north, so mm. Pinkins and Thumbs was the South, you know what I'm saying? Funk but everybody too. know what I live for the funk, and I love the funk, and I need the funk, so pass me the funk. <laughs> me, so if y'all don't you know, know, you know, God and if you me. don't know, just South Memphis, <laughs> throw it up, but, so, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Project Pet again. No, really? South. You know <laughs> there it is. Now, um, Memphis being a town of, of full of musical history. Man, what? Tons of musical history, you know, from, from, from all different genres. Even myself, like, uh, you know, I, I had the opportunity to be signed to A Ball and MJG in 2014. Wow. You know, it was, a, it was definitely an honorary ride. Wow. Where? What's in the water out there, brother? Where, 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 where is all this music coming from? Uh, that's, it's that Mississippi River mud, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That mud is uh, real deep out there. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. My father was a musician, you know what I'm saying? The people that came before him, you know what I'm saying? It's just, it's something about being by that water. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That Mississippi River, and then, you know, it's a lot of struggle. It's a lot of darkness, you know what I'm saying? It's a lot of pain. And if you ever experienced a goddamn pain before, then you know that, you know what I'm saying, you have to let it out, pressure busts a pipe. Exactly. So a lot of the music, you know, you have the Al Greens, you know what I'm saying, people like that, that uh, the Isley, uh, not the Isley, but Earth, Wind and Fire, you know what I'm saying, Maurice White, he actually went to high school with my father, you know mm. what I'm saying, so uh, Aretha Franklin, you know what I'm saying, a lot of pain, you know what I'm saying, so uh, we struggled, but you know, we fight us. You it know makes for great saying? music. Though. Yeah, and Memphis bred us to be ready for anything, <laughs> anywhere. It's a trap, it's a gift and a curse. It, it, it makes you feel like you have to do it from right there. But if you get past that mentality and go a little bit farther and explore, then you'll see that Memphis has prepared you to go anywhere and accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? It's just a lot of pain and struggle and a lot of crying out. And we put our all into it. And I believe that's what makes such great music compliment. No respect. Now, now Memphis has a lot of different eras in you. I mean, we call eras. You know, yeah, you got, you yeah, got, yeah, you know, yeah. Even even with hip hop, you know, you got your ball and G. Yeah. You know, you got your you got your Project Patch, your three six eras, and you got you know uh, you got you go a little farther. You got maybe your Yo Gotti era. I don't know if he has you know. Yeah, you got it. We definitely have his era. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Then you got a you no. Know, then you got the money bag and the golf <laughs> era. You, know? you got the money bag and golf era. And then now you got this, you know, the, the new, the newer, newer one. You know, you get the Pooh this. You know what I'm saying? What does Player Fly think about these new Memphis rappers? Um, I don't think about them. Um, <laughs> I listen to all types of music, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I just come from an era where we made music a little bit differently, like you was just talking about in the last question. You know, it just has a lot of soul and a lot of passion. And, you know, who's to say that their music isn't passionate? I'm definitely not saying that. It's just... Um, I identify with the passion from the Marvin Gaye era. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So with that being it. said, it's kind of like a foreign territory. You know, uh, it's like learning to uh, speak Mandarin. You know what I'm saying? It's just, uh, it's a little late in the race for me to get yes, with it like that. But it's no offense to anybody. I just 
love music. Yes, sir. You know yes, sir. What I'm I yes, sir. Yes, sir. Might not necessarily love rap or exactly. the way that some people rap or the tracks that they choose to rap upon. And it's not nothing channel. personal, it's just not for no, you. But no, you know what I'm saying? I'm still listening to old Bobby Womack records. Still Come on, man. Records Come on, man. I'm still listening to old Tina Marie and Rick James. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And then I throw on some Jonas Brothers or some. <laughs> <Sean> <laughs> he says some Jonas Brothers. Yeah, I throw on some Sean Mendes. You know what, <laughs> what I'm saying? I throw on a little Justin Bieber. You know what I'm saying? I throw on a little Pink. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no telling what you might hear me listening to. You know what I'm saying? When growing up, when you started getting into music, did you ever think that it was going to be this big? Yep. You know what I'm saying? I I, I had aspiration. I ran back into my second grade girlfriend, and Come she on. told me that uh, I said that I was going to be performing on stages like Michael Jackson way back then. Wow. You know, I recall uh, going to church. And they asking you what you want to be, you know, when you grow up and me telling them I wanted to be a singer like my father, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Uh, so I, I had uh, big dreams and big aspirations. And, you know, and just like that, question is yes and no, because you can never say, well, I knew it was going to be this here. But I knew what I wanted, you know what I'm saying? I knew that I was a genius. My father uh, made me aware that I was a musical genius. He taught me how to tap into my talents, especially when I brought the family business home and showed him, hey, this is what I want to do. Then he showed me a whole new, you know, a whole new yeah. way to deal with this shit. You yes, know sir. what I'm saying? It became a business and a pleasure all in one for him and for me. So, you know, it's really not work. So it's just, you know, music. There it is, baby. Now, I've always wanted to ask this question. I got you here so I can ask it now. Because I ask, I ask, I ask this you other person. Ask, that don't mean I have to yeah, ask. Exactly, exactly. You know, it's like about the podcast. You know, you do as you please. Now, you are a player. Fly. You know, I had a lot of dealings with a guy by the name of Pimp Type MJG. <laughs> what is the difference between a pimp and a player? Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> I got him a date, Jack. Not today. Not today? <laughs> Not tomorrow. <laughs> Not today. You know, the differences vary in so many different ways. You know what I'm saying? Me, personally, myself, I've never been a pimp. I never want to be a pimp. You yeah, understand yeah. what I'm saying? Even though so many women I come across and so many people that I came in contact with so easily said, are you a pimp? You know what I'm saying? You could have been a pimp. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, the difference is because I could be a pastor. At the same time, you know okay. what I'm saying? This player shit that I spit, man, I'm preaching this shit, teaching this shit, you know what I'm yes, saying? Sir. So I don't know uh, about uh, the gorilla on the hole, but I will come <laughs> up on your job and act a damn fool, you know what I'm saying? Yes, and see, the player might not play it off cool, you know what I'm saying? Pimp might have to, player might not, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, <laughs> but shout, shout out to Pimp Type, man. I got a record with uh, Pimp Type too, it's called Same OG. Uh, it's produced by Zay Tobin, uh, you know what I'm saying? Just like the singer that I'm pushing now, Don't Know Me, uh, produced by Zay Tobin. But I got a real nice record of featuring Pimp Type, man. Shout and out. Mine is so cold, man, I ain't even have to call him, man. Just text, wow. you know what I'm saying? That's what he said. If I make that OG text, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't want to see what's going to happen next, you know what I'm yes, saying? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Now, you said, you said a name, man. You've done a lot, a lot, a of, lot of work with Zay Tobin. Man, that's my it's, it's, it seems like it's 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 a it's a certain level of chemistry between y'all when y'all get together on that music. It's very easy to work with Zay Tobin. He's such a humble and talented, God fearing individual. He's such a family oriented individual. I come from that same upbringing and background. Um, it's a brotherhood out of this world. You know what I'm saying? You know Zay will tell you himself how you know when he migrated to the south from the West Coast, how he started to, uh, you know, change his style of making beats, and Zay used to actually rap himself, you hmm. know what I'm saying? I didn't know that. And he said, you know, um, that's what, there was one artist in particular that they would try to target, you know what I'm saying, their rap <coughs> capabilities and abilities around, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, and if anybody was actually getting off in the booth or actually going hard, they were like, oh man, you, you going like fly, you doing the fly, you wow. know what I'm saying? So. Um, he's had strong admiration for me and my lyricism for a long time, you know what I'm saying? Like I say, he built his whole beat maker style of down south, you know, all the stuff that he made, you know, for the Gucci and the Juice and all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? That was basically him just trying to find his way and he said he used 
me and my cadence and my skills and my wow. talent is his roadmap, is his GPS, you know what I'm saying, is his guiding light to develop the artists around him as well as his beat making skills. So just knowing that he had such strong admiration for me, you know what I'm saying, that just made it, you know, so much more easier to just fall in love with him and just, you know what I'm saying, do business with him and make music with him and just not have any worries, you know what I'm saying. And that's my brother. Love him so motherfucking much, and I'm so thankful for him. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Flowers is Aetoven, ladies and gentlemen. Flowers and ladies is Yeah, man. My motherfucking brother. Like, <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, there was there was there was times in your career you were in, you were you were in a group, and you've been solo. I ain't never been in no group. Okay, there it is. <laughs> My and daddy was in a group called Ovation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, and there it is. Yeah, they was on the beat back in 1966. You can pull it up on YouTube. You there it is. Yeah, my dad was in a group. My dad said groups weren't good for me. He said the contract that those people tried to present back in those days was standard contracts. They didn't mean the artists no good. I made music with several artists, you know yes, what I'm saying, as I was finding my way. But I've never been a member of a rap group ever. 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 Focus on the ever. <laughs> um, so you've always been a solo artist. Yes. Uh, getting to the point of, of you making, what would you consider your breakout record if you could, if you have one? Hmm. And how did it come about? Well, <laughs> the biggest record, even though you asked about the breakout record, yeah. the biggest record obviously is nobody needs nobody. Everybody loves their record. Mm -hmm. um, but the breakout record, I think, was before that. That had to be getting it on. If not getting it on, Just Awake and Shaking was always a yes, hood sir. anthem around the city. Yeah. Triple Bitch Mafia, you know what I'm saying? The, the 3-6 Mafia disc, the Triple Bitch Mafia record was real big around the city just for little old me standing up to them with them, you know, after they dissed these people and dissing their people and dissing bitches all around the city, you know what I'm saying? Somebody stood up, nigga, y'all want to rap about some women, nigga, you know what I'm saying? Here I go. It was six of them, only one of me, you know what I'm saying? But even after that, Crowning Me was a solo record featuring my father, and to this day, it's one of the biggest records that I've had. It has the historic quote, quote at the beginning, niggas asked me if I ever reached the top, would I forget about them? So I asked niggas if I don't reach the top, would y'all forget about me? Come on. And so, you know, records like that, I would have to say that they were more of a breakout record because they were Free, nobody needs nobody. You understand what I'm saying? Play a fly had an identity before nobody needs nobody existed. But once that record surfaced, then my dad will give him all the props for that record. You know what I'm saying? Because the production was tight, all the artists involved with the record was tight. However, my dad truly stole the show. You yes, know sir. what I'm saying? He sang from beginning to end Come on that motherfucker. And man, that's what you want to hear. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, those are some of the biggest records. Those are the breakout records, you know what I'm saying? I respect, respect, respect. So, you know, it's um, it's funny you, uh, you, you speak, you speak, uh, I, I, it almost seems like, uh, you know, a lot of times I talk to people and, and, and they're reserved in, in, their, uh, in their truths. It hmm. seems like Play a Fly lives in his. Well, you know, some of those words that I mentioned when you, Ask me the first question, that's what they mean. I'm a studious, trustworthy, lover of truth. Those are my names, that's what I am, you know what I'm saying? I identify with the truth, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's for better or for worse, you know what I'm saying? I was taught that that's what I have to own up to. There's no other option, you understand what I'm saying? I'm not with deceit, it's not the art of deception. I'm not trying to connive or get over. I'm just able to identify with who I am, what I am, what I know, what I don't know, and I'm firm in my convictions. It's simple as that, and that's identified as the truth. Yes, sir. At the end of the day, I don't have to tell you anything else after that. A lie may require, you know, much more effort than I'm willing to provide, you know what yes, I'm saying? Sir. Yes, sir. And I don't owe you that much. I don't know you that well. And last time I checked, I don't need no new friends today. Damn so right. with that being said, I don't have to say you're a dream. I'm a beautiful nightmare. My goddamn <laughs> You are um, a veteran. There's Some make that OG. Me. Most will say legend. <laughs> uh, and you still continue to do it to this day. What is the difference between pushing music in today's climate, you know, climate as far as 2021, and pushing music back when you were Well, two just things, started. two things are different. The market is so saturated, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't take much effort for anybody to become 
a rapper, you know what I'm saying? Shit, by show of hands in this motherfucker right now, I'm willing to bet you 40% of the motherfuckers in here think they can rap. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, and so the market is so saturated, it once meant something to be a musician, to be an artist, to actually have your CDs on the shelf in the record stores and shit like that. Uh, today, you know, you can record the shit, shoot your video, do all this shit from your phone, you know, find a distributor, one-stop shop, which is the second thing. It's so easy to do, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you don't get studio time, it was a prestigious thing. It was expensive. It was expensive to buy 35 millimeter film to shoot videos on and shit like that. Videos cost damn near $10,000. Just for some bullshit, you understand what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Let alone you trying to do some shit like uh, California Love or some thriller shit. You understand what I'm saying? So, just those two things alone, just uh, the market being so saturated, and then the capabilities and abilities that you have at your fingertips. And one more thing, social media with the promotion. You know what I'm saying? We used to actually have to go inside the record stores and have meet and greets and in stores and product placement. Want your shit to be right there on the shelf, right in the front, and getting your posters hung up. Now you know. Shit, just like we're streaming live, we're going live, you know what I'm saying? You got social media, you got YouTube, you got Vivo, you know what I'm saying? So that just... It's easy. Man, it, it, it's, it's easier. You just have more tools, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, like I said, it's so saturated, so it's kind of, you know what I'm saying? It's a scale. You got to kind of weigh out your options and play your hand, you know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Because yes, shit, sir. Everybody ain't got all that money to spend like that, like they say it requires. I know bro was the only one who was talking about to take this much money, break a goddamn yeah. single. Everybody ain't got it like that. Everybody ain't got it like that. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, yeah, right. You better figure out another way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but shit, <laughs> such I still need you to play this motherfucker so that you come over here with this shit talking about it costs all that to break these motherfuckers. You know, like, I ain't got it like that. Look, I ain't got it, man. Shit, that's why I'm coming all the way down and do this goddamn podcast. Yes, so you sir. have to find ways to surprise your shit in other ways. Yes, you know sir. what I'm saying? Y'all didn't get them motherfuckers to come down here, but I can't. So with that being said, show some love, keep it real. You know what I'm saying? Yes, Fuck sir. with me. You know what I'm saying? Damn right. And, you know, so you have to pick and choose your battles carefully. You play the cards you dealt, such and all shit. Anytime you call, I'm going to come. You know what I'm saying? So, and there's little relationships like that that help me stay yeah. afloat. You know what What, what keeps you going? Oh, man, God first, uh, man, the family business, you know, I mob in the name of my grandmother, Minnie Mae, it's Minnie Mae Mafia, Minnie Mae music, Minnie Mae everything, you know what I'm saying, I have to do it for my dad being a second generation musician and just exploiting everything that he's taught me, you yeah. know what I'm saying. Uh, and, you know, I have another generation that, uh, you know, my offspring have an offspring. My kids wow. having kids, you know what I'm saying? I just look like this, you know wow. what I'm saying? But I got a young one that look just like me. He a monster, he a beast, and I love him, you know what I'm saying? And he's just like new wind beneath my wings. So, you know, it just gives me a reason to do it. And it's so much work that is left undone on my behalf, you know what I'm saying? You know, my name Fly. You know what I'm saying? I'm a soar. I'm gonna go high. I'm gonna get high and go high. You know what I'm saying? And the world is a big, vast place. You know what I'm saying? So shit, it's a lot of ground that I have yet to cover. Funky town, baby. King. Funky town. God damn it. <laughs> what y'all think about my interview, man? What's up? Yeah, all right, right there. <laughs> hey, man, he's been a whole lot of playing shit over here, Jack. Uh, hey, you make you make the interview process real easy, man. I can just sit back and cool. Just like, man, let play, let fly talk that shit, man. man this you know what I'm saying? Do, this is what I do. What does the M3 stand for? In, in I just told Minimay. you. Minimay. 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 Gotcha. My grandma, my gotcha. dude. Makes it, in my it all grandma, makes my sense now. Mini May music, Mini May mafia. M to the third is all I see. M to the third, A four and one, always, forever, one more day. Yes, sir. Yes. Now sir. this is the Ugly Money podcast, and we salute the process of success. Everything between your first dollar and your first million, that's what we call ugly money. Mm. The, uh, you know, the, the process. You know, I know some times in your life that you had some ups and downs. I know some times that uh, some doors were closed in your face. I know some times in your life that maybe, you know, things didn't seem like they were going to work out right. If you could give me a time that you had, you had fell down and how you got back up from it. Oh, man. You know, the biggest fall. <laughs> Yeah, the biggest fall was um, it's a trifecta actually. 
Um, first, my father passed away. Then my grandmother passed away. You know what I'm saying? At less than a year after, you know, maybe 18 months after. And then it seemed like I passed away because shit, I went in and started the 7.2 year sentence. You know what I'm saying? So shit, it was like I lost everything. You know what I'm saying? Everything we just talked about in the last segment. Like I said, man, I'm about to bump a dad yeah. down. Then my grandma dad said, no more beer to your son. Then later now, I got a mom and Then I fucking around these folks and gave me seven years. I'm like, man, what's happening? <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait. Slow down. Yeah. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Hell no. <laughs> Woo, boy. Hell yeah. So yeah, it was dark. But um, one day they called my name. I was back there in the shower smoking. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Me? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are y'all sure? <laughs> <That's all> me. <laughs> no mistakes. <laughs> all right. Shit, man. I can't get away. Shit, the one talking about that motherfucker. Yes, God damn right. Yeah, yeah. So that was, you know, the first signs of Popeye reaching for the can of spinach. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to blow those ass up for the go. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir. Now, um, I gotta ask this question. You, you don't have, have to, to, but yeah, well, well, I would like to it's ask this question. It's your podcast, and, and, you know, and you don't have to answer it. Oh no, you now you are playing. Exactly. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning from the OG. Is there ever a chance? No. Nope. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no. Never. Never gonna happen. Never gonna. You, happen. you already know the question. Never I was about going to happen. to happen. Okay. Here's why. Okay. Sometimes in life, in order to accomplish things that you want to accomplish, you have to do separate ways. Yes. Right now, I've been going my separate way. I'm trying to accomplish what I want to accomplish. My goals are on the line with certain people's goals, and I'm not looking to see if they do. I don't have any concern or interest in their goals or what they're trying to achieve. At the end of the day, I honestly believe that I'm more of an asset than a liability to any of these people that you may be thinking about. Damn. I'm a mind reader too. I, I see you that. Know what I'm no, for <laughs> real. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm not in the mood for that today. Uh, tomorrow don't look so good either, and uh, I'm, I can live with that. Respectfully, so bro. And I appreciate you coming by, man. It, 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 or it, disrespectfully. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no. I didn't even get to say the name, so hey, fuck it, then. It doesn't matter know. what your name is. <laughs> hey, let them know what's coming up next for Player Flower. All right, now, uh, it's Don't Know Me, Don't Know Me, Don't Know Me. That's what's going on right now. My new single uh, produced by Zay Tobin, uh, my Bebo channel, my YouTube channel. Uh, my merchandise online is H-O-P-W-I-T-F-L-Y. Do that right now. Log on and shop with Fly. You know what I'm saying? Right now, I'm always behind the counter 24 hours a day in my online store. I don't sleep. I just sit there in the online store just waiting on you to come buy a t-shirt. So if you ever want to holler at me, just come to the online store. All you got to do is log on, S-H-O-P-W-I-T-F-L-Y.com. Do that shit right now. Do that you know shit right now. And uh, other than that, I got another single coming up with uh, another Memphis 10 legend, Drummer Boy. Yes, sir. Uh, he produced this single, I Met a Girl. Uh, so I'm going to be releasing that actually this week. I think it come out on the 28th of May. I'm um, starting out to release a song a month. Then I'm going to move bi-weekly. I'm going to release a song every other week. And then I'm going to mm. start releasing a song every week. Every Friday, I'm going to release one song. It's going to be an assortment of old and new because my old catalog has been removed off all the social, I mean, off the all digital streaming platforms, but I'm going to replace it. I'm going to, you know, put it back out there and I found a new distributor, so I'm just going to spoon feed it back into mm. the industry a little you, bit. You, you are learning the new, the new, the new way oh. of marketing. You learned fast, my sir. It took me a minute, though. It really was the people around me. They was more stubborn than I was, and it took me a minute to kind of get them on board, and it really took me to just say, fuck getting them on board. This is what I'm going to do. And so this is what I'm doing because it's black shit anyway. I've always owned 100% of all my masters, of all my sound recordings, and my performing arts. I've always owned 200% of my publishing. I've been publishing my own music since I was, what, 16 years old. I have my own publishing company affiliated with BMI. So that means if you want to remix any of my songs or any of that shit, you got to come see you. 500000 for the first top tier songs. That means my top... Ten songs, that's the sample clearance fee. 
500000 So don't play with me. I own the rights to all my shit. Go get the shit for free. <laughs> I just look like this. Hey, man, if somebody want to become a player, give them. How can a person, a, a regular, normal guy, become a player? Believe in God. Believe in yourself. And always play the game to win. Anything that you're doing, man. If you shooting a basketball like myself, I can't shoot basketball to save my life. <laughs> but if I got a ball in my hand and it's a goal right there, if I throw that motherfucker up, in my mind, that motherfucker going in. Now I'm telling y'all, this motherfucker is not gonna go in, but in my mind, yes sir, this motherfucker going in because I'm a player. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah, you keep God first, man. Believe in yourself, man. Always play to win. And uh, you might can get started, but you know, to be a player like this, you know what I'm saying? That's, just, that's a high level player. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm right in the season. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ladies and gentlemen, that's how to be a player. That wasn't Bill Bellamy, you feel what I'm saying? No. Nah. All right, man, let them know where to follow you at before we get out of here, Fly. Oh, uh, the only way you can follow me is on IG. That's playerflym 3 That's P L A Y A F L Y M3. You know what I'm saying? If you want to book me, though, you know what I'm saying? Like I told him in the last video. You know what I'm saying? I had your bitch eat third legs of crab legs. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to send y'all this motherfucking number. So, you know what I'm saying? If uh, you keep it to your motherfucking self, because your gal get a hold to it, it's going to be third legs of crab legs for your gal. I guarantee it. 678 6788244359. Again, that's 678 6788244359. One more time. 678 Yeah. Live from Funky Town. <laughs> Hey, man. I can hear the blow pop the old jokes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I got it, baby. baby uh, we we got to take a trip. Such we go to. We got to take a trip to Funky Town. Man, y'all don't want to go. Don't go. Man, y'all can go. Fuck this shit. <laughs> Fuck. I ain't being responsible. Mom, you know what I'm saying? Fuck it up. Disclaimers or whatever. Oh, you know what I'm saying? These motherfuckers can't be here. Hey, man. Follow me at Ugly Money, N I C H E. That's Ugly Money, Nietzsche. And we remember, broke this here. We ain't got no motherfucking money. We ain't got no money. We ain't got no money. Be remember, the bigger the dream, the bigger the risk, the bigger the pay. Off his ass. I'm just a dude to come get this shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and we still on the ugly money podcast. Salute. Tell me, can you get it? Yes, back? sir. Oh, yeah. Y'all call.